Welcome to the DHL Clubhouse as we dig deep into the vault for an epic game in Canadian rugby history. We take you back to the Women's Rugby World Cup in 2014 and its semi-final action with Canada versus the home team France at Stade Jambouin in Paris. This was August 13th, 2014, and let's set the scene for you. This stadium, normally the home of uh, Stade Francais of Europe's top 14 rugby, was going to play host to arguably the largest crowd ever for a women's 15s match. Incredible atmosphere. We knew there were 4 million people in France watching it on TV and 90 countries across the world, Canada taking on France. What was not in dispute was the atmosphere there in the stadium. <clears throat> Tricolore, the flags waving, the Marseillaise ringing out throughout the stadium, and a French team facing Canada that had not conceded a try the whole Rugby World Cup tournament, and they were very much favourites. Earlier in that day, don't forget, England had booked their place in the final. Canada had drawn with England in their pool play. They beat Ireland 40 points to seven. And Canada, who had been four times in the semifinals before in their women's rugby past, had never made it to a final. So this was the big chance. Francois Raté was the uh, coach, a Frenchman by origin, but very much Canadian on this day. He was the head coach, and he'd steer them to victories over Spain and Samoa in the pool and that tie with England. Well, I'm delighted to be joined by uh, two greats of the game and uh, two women who played a very large role in that uh, famous semifinal. Firstly, the pride of St. Anne de Bellevue, Latoya Blackwood, who played in the second row that day alongside Maria Sampson. And uh, good to have you here, Latoya. And joining her, Alyssa Allery. Not only did she provide one of the moments of the game where Canada took their lead, but uh, she also was a... Uh, her skills were put on display. She was pulled up from fullback and had to play scrum half after the injury to Stephanie Bernier. But more on that. Great to have you here, Alyssa. Thanks for having us. So, ladies, um, just looking at a few minutes of this tape, the anthems, you see the atmosphere. What was it like for you as a team, Latoya, preparing that week in France to play the, the heavily favoured French team? What was the atmosphere like? <laughs> um, it was amazing. Um, there was a lot of fans, as you talked about. It was a very um, well-watched um, and well-attended World Cup, um, I think. But for us, our focus was to just to focus on ourselves, to focus as a team, um, to, to play for each other and to play as one. And was that very much the message from Francois Rate? Alessia, he talked about that, how the pressure was on them as the home team. Um, and what did it mean to focus on yourselves ahead of that big game? Yeah, Francois would, would often say, jouer, jouer. And um, so he just really wanted us to he trust our skill set, um, trust the player beside you, and, and just do what you do best. And it looked like there was real trust. I mean, I've seen a lot of rugby, but in the tunnel before the game during the anthems, there was smiles on faces, a bit of horsing around. There was a, a quiet confidence there, even though the task was massive at hand. Toya, this is a team that knew each other really well and had put in a lot of hard yards together to get to the Rugby World Cup. Yeah, um, we had a year to prepare um, and we were decentralized. So we made the most of, of, of every um, every tour that we went on. Um, we we knew that we were working hard um, in the off seasons and um, we knew that this was an important uh, moment for our, our, our program and, and for ourselves. And so we we just decided to to play, as, as Alyssa says, jouer, jouer, have fun and to um, and to just uh, be a giant killer that day. Well, in fact, very dedicated group. You were, in fact, pay to play to be at that tournament. So the women were funding their own appearance at a Rugby World Cup, the hard work that went in. A um, lot of leaders there, Gary Duclos on the coaching front and Kelly Russell, your captain. Alyssa, how important was leadership like that along with Francois Rattier? The leadership was incredible. Um, from staff, Colette was there. We had... Um, Steve, who's currently the SNC for the Sevens program. We just had just absolutely everyone from, from staff to players to physios. Everyone was on the same page. Everyone was out there with the same goal, but it was just it was just such a connected group. And, and some, some brought humor, some brought energy, some brought calmness. It, it was just the, the perfect storm, really. And Toy, I know Gary Duclos, a man who had been had his own playing experience of playing in a World Cup uh, quarterfinal, but he was more than a scrum coach. He was he was a leader for the the off field activities as well. Yeah, um, as Alyssa said, he brought that. Someone he was the person that brought that calming um, experience. Um, his model was be like water, um, and so 
yeah, he's he's an amazing man. He's he's an amazing coach. I think he's hands down one of the best uh, tight five uh, coaches we have in Canada. Um, he and John Lavery, I I think, are the best. Um, and I, I I love and respect Gary Dukla. He's a he's a father to me. So um, having him there and having care um, Kelly Russell, um, our captain, um, you know, by your side, you you want to play as as hard as as she's playing. So it was it was an awesome experience. And you and Maria were dubbed the Towers of Power after that performance against England. Your tight five were outstanding and throughout this game totally disrupted the French scrum. MP was just owned her opposite number, I thought. Um, yeah, how important was that for you, Alyssa, to have that kind of platform? I mean, we saw it famously on the, the big try, Magalie Harvey's try of the year candidate. Um, that was obviously one off scrum ball. How important was it that the, the forwards did the job? It was unreal um, to, to steal that scrum. And I'm sure LaToya can tell you what was going on in there. Cause all I know is I was playing scrum half and the ball popped out on our side. So, um, and then for, you know, the trust and, and the trust in the process and the coaches trusted us. So we were able to move that ball right in front of our goal line. And, and then Magali, like everyone saw was, uh, was able to finish it brilliantly. And you were a team that was taught to play, express yourselves. Oh, very much the French flair was in Canadian jerseys that day, and the, the French were playing a tight driving game, and uh, that comes from the, from your coaching. Um, to say that, that scrum, Toy, what was your view on that? You guys had stolen the ball, um, and then all of a sudden, uh, Alyssa pops out right and sees an option, and then Magali does her, her business. Yeah, um, so... As a four, you're you're always taught if you're defending your five meter uh, on your on the five meter line, you you try to lock out and you don't either you don't move, you don't give an inch, and you don't take an inch, um, just so you can have a secure defensive line for the backs. Um, but we knew that we were the better team. We knew that we were the better pack. Um, we weren't getting the respect that we deserved before the game, um, and we wanted to make a point to that. Um, and as you said, MP hands down, she crushed her opposition that day. Um, she was She's one of the best loose head props I've ever played played with and played against. Um, and so, yeah, we, we just wanted to prove the world that we were the better pack that day. And some people forget, Alyssa, but moments before uh, the try of the year candidate, um, you'd popped up. You'd been forced to come from fullback, as we said, through Stephanie Bernier's uh, injury. Um, you were playing at scrum half. You didn't have a lot of time there. And then you spotted a gap, a, a pretty wide gap, it must be said, but you took it well uh, for what is an individual incredible try. Yeah, I think Latoya's seen that move a few times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Does it always work um, that well? The gap was just there, and I don't even know if I had to. I <laughs> well, it worked all that time. I, the gap was so huge. I don't even think I had to dummy, but um, I think we had gotten a, a counter attack. Just the ball was moving well. Everyone trusted each other, and so um, it was it was quite the feeling to break through the line and then to have the team. Yeah, it was just it, it was unreal. And then to 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 build on that and and that kind of like shook off my my change of position, and then I was just looking forward from that moment on. So those two tries sparked the nation, literally jumping around in clubhouses and pubs right across the country. Um, but the last 20 minutes were a bit of a nightmare. They scored a couple of tries and were very much banging at the door. What's your take on that, Toya, um, as you guys were trying to gain that elusive final position, but France steaming right back? Um, I think just, you know, it's typical in, in, in rugby that you, you do have your blips sometimes mentally and physically. The last 20 minutes are the hardest, um, but we brought in our impact subs and, and they kind of, they held us through, they kept us alive. Um, we, we had such great depth. Um, and so, although we did falter a bit, um, we, we, we showed our resilience and, and we, and it paid off and it was hands down the best experience. Well, did it ever, it'll be great viewing coming up, but uh, at the end of that game, obviously uh, a few texts come in, I'm sure to, to your phones, but were you guys aware Alyssa, of what was going on back home? The TSN, as I said, were running it. There were viewing parties. There were young girls, dare I say it, seeing rugby for the first time and just loving that you're playing in front of 20,000 people and you're now in a World Cup final. Did the team realize what they were achieving? Um, I think like later on, for sure, when we got back to, to Marcusi and in our, in our space and Facebook and connecting with family and friends, it was just, it was overwhelming. Um, I don't think I fell asleep before 3 or 4 a.m. and we still have another, you know, and we have to focus and, and move forward, obviously celebrate the win. Um, but I remember just a little personal note on my end, my dad previously um, had looked into coming, coming to Paris and, and he couldn't make it, but he said, if, oh, if Canada makes it to finals, 
I'll, I'll book my flight knowing very well that that never happened before. So he felt pretty safe. And then um, on the drive back, I, I just grabbed a phone and called him and he said, yep, <laughs> I booked my flight. I'll be there tomorrow. And so he came for like f- three or four days and just, yeah, it was, it was incredible to have family there in the stands. Well, it was history in the making. And, and Toya, Colette McCauley was also part of that coaching staff, a former player. There have been a whole generation or several generations of women that have put Canadian rugby on the map. Did you sense um, that you were doing it for them as well, that you finally got that spot in the final against England the, the following week? Absolutely. Um, having Colette McCauley there was amazing. Um, she was a, a great mentor and coach, not only for the backs, but for the forwards as well. Um, and um, having her there and having her kind of share the history of, of the women's program, um, it just kind of it's just inspiring for, for us. And, and it made us kind of want to win for them and, and win for, the, for those who wore our jerseys um, prior and for those who will be wearing our jerseys um, in, the, in the future. Well, that is the Canadian way. Thank you, ladies. It's truly a rare insight into one of the great days of Canadian rugby. Stay with us. We'll have some uh, live conversation on Facebook and YouTube during the match and a few more comments from the ladies at the end. But we hope you enjoy this trip to the DHL Clubhouse. Enjoy watching Toya and Alyssa and all the Canadian women in this epic battle with France. Thanks again to DHL for helping us deliver you these games and future games we're going to bring up in the vault. And thank you, of course, to all our frontline workers. Stay safe, everyone, and we'll talk to you after the match. As the sun sets over the Stade de Jean Boin and the home of Stade Francais Rugby in the shadow of the iconic Pas de France to the southwest of France's capital, we welcome viewers worldwide for what promises to be a nail biter of a second semi final here in the Women's Rugby World Cup of 2014. The prize. A place in the final for the first time for either much fancied France, the hosts and Six Nations champions, or Canada. The winners will meet England, who produced their best performance of the tournament to defeat a spirited Ireland 15 by 40 points to 7 in the first semi-final. This is Wynne Griffith and I'm joined by Simon Monix in the commentary box. Glad you were able to join us to see whether France or Canada can progress to the Cup semi-finals for the very first time a huge crowd one of the biggest crowds ever probably for a women's international match and uh, the crowds have been fantastic uh, in Marcoussi and uh, today as well at the Stade Jean Bois as we take one step uh, closer to the cup final which will be played here on Sunday. France uh, looking for a place in the World Cup final for the very first time have had to reorganize following an injury to impressive wing three quarter Camille Grassino. Fullback Caroline Ladanus steps forward to fill the left wing berth with a resourceful Christelle Ledouf coming in at the back. But the power of this French side lies with a pack. Number eight, Safi and Dai, shortlisted for Woman Player of the Year. Denada and Koita at lock, backing up Pizano, Portares and the irrepressible hooker and captain Gael Mino up front. Huge support here for both nations and it's good to see the Canadians here in a goodly number. Expatriates, some of them of course, family and friends as well. It's a huge day for Canadian rugby, that's for sure. They're through to a semi-final for the uh, fourth time as we look at the team. The task for them, led by Kelly Russell at eight, gets even greater when you consider that no team to date has managed to cross the French try line. Speedster Brittany Waters comes in on the left wing in place of Jessica Dovani, the only change from the team that drew with England in their final pool match. On the right is Magli Harvey, who joins Russell on the Player of the Year shortlist. We've already referred to the power of the French at scrum time. It's well worth noting that the Canada front five with Blackwood and Samson at lock dubbed the Towers of Power had the better of finalists England over the weekend. So the stage is set. Simon Mannix, we've already seen a very powerful uh, French uh, English side. What do you make of this one? Having seen Canada the other night draw with England and England kick the ball out at the final whistle, probably feeling a little lucky that they were able to secure a draw. Well, they certainly would have come away feeling a touch lucky with that draw, but uh, they really kicked on with their performance here earlier on this afternoon. They have a very impressive display in beating the Irish side. 
But uh, tonight, well, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? The, the French absolutely dominant in their last outing up front. An extremely powerful display up front. Canada also have the firepower to match them. The home crowd, that's going to be an incredible advantage for this French side. But as you said, when this is probably the biggest crowd ever, certainly that these women would have played in front of before. Nerves can get the better of players on these occasions here. But no doubt the wave and the enthusiasm that is behind this French side could carry them over the line tonight. You, and you can be sure of one thing, Canada are not going to give an inch. That's for sure, they come into this match as uh, underdogs. France, naturally the, the favourites. France's sixth World Cup semi-final. They have never reached a final. Canada's fourth semi-final. They also have never reached a final. This is the seventh time they have met in France. France have won four, Canada two. So far, let's see how uh, this second semi-final unfolds. A study in concentration, that's Caroline Ledanius in uh, mid-shot there. She is the, uh, the outside half for France and playmaker. As we move down the line, get ready for the row when the French come onto the field, led uh, by hooker Gael Mignot. Here they come, and there is the roar. This fantastic stadium. New stadium at the Stade Jean Bois. A 20,000 seater in the shadow of the Parc de France, uh, the former home of French rugby. Fifteen broadcasters taking these pictures uh, courtesy of French television to some 90 countries all across the world. As I say, it's fantastic that you were able to join us for what is going to be quite a game and quite an event uh, for the uh, 50 or so ladies out on the field of play, including the, uh, the referees team, of course, as we await the national anthems. And listen carefully to the Canadian anthem. French words in the middle of that uh, Canadian national anthem, some French Canadians in this Canadian squad, but there will be no mistaking La Marseillaise.
a proud day it is uh, for these uh, young French ladies, probably the proudest of their rugby career so far. And the Canadians, well, both side of one or two uh, black eyes there, that only adds to the charm of the North Americans. They're really up for this one, I can promise you. And with a French coach as well in uh, Francois Rattier, who celebrated his 42nd birthday yesterday. Muted celebrations there may have been, but if Canada take this one, then there'll be huge celebrations tonight. Taking charge of this one is the uh, civil servant from Ashbourne in County Meath, Ireland. She is Helen O'Reilly, and she's supported by Nikki Inwood from New Zealand and Claire Daniels from England. So hang on to something solid, because this is going to be quite a ride. France against Canada for a place in the Women's Rugby World Cup Final of 2014. England await. Gael Mino in the background, really pumped up. Some nerves perhaps early on as referee O'Reilly waits for the go-ahead. And there it is. The first kick then will be from uh, the very experienced Mandy Marchak. Like any number of Canadians behind uh, the scrum. Plenty of experience uh, in the short code on the uh, Sevens circuit. As indeed do uh, four or five of the young ladies behind the scrum for France. And that's a first touch, a confident first touch for Sandrine Agricole. This will be her last season, she says. So will she bid farewell, I wonder, with a world title? Let's go in, Reg. The first line out, Canada. Put in the 15, okay? Call a shortened line out. To the back it goes, claimed by Marie-Pierre Pinot Reed. MP for short, and she'll be MP from me for the next 80 minutes or so. Andrea Burke. Nudges it forward, or so says uh, referee O'Reilly. Not so sure that she did myself. Overthrowing the line out straight away there from Canada. Signs of nerves maybe out there, and then Burke maybe a little look up. She heard the footsteps coming there. The referee sighted a small knock on there. Opportunity yes, once please. again for France to impose themselves in the set piece, which is what they'll want to do. So the first test for the Canadians, the power of the French scrum right at the back is uh, Safi Andai, but it's Canada will get the nudge on. Great work by Canada at the scrum, still driving through. The front five, very efficient against England uh, last weekend. And uh, overshadowed their English counterparts. Good work by uh, Comba Diallo. Huge kick downfield from the fullback, Christelle Ledouf. Taken up here by. Uh, MP Pino Reed. Good quick ball for Elisa Alari. Release, Stephanie Bernier. Jeffrey O'Reilly happy that uh, the ball went backwards. And the greater majority of the crowd not so sure. Agricol, neat little kick into the wide open spaces behind the Canadian defence. But back there for Canada was the captain Kelly Russell. And she will get quite a few mentions, no doubt, uh, during the next hour and uh, 20 minutes or so. So influential for the Canada squad is the captain Kelly Russell. France looking to outmuscle the Canadians here. They've won the turnover. Mino it was. Control is what's required here. At the base, then it's uh, 
Jennifer Tronsi. This is Agricol taking on the Canadian defence just inside the uh, Canada 22. Spun out to uh, Shannon Izar, uh, finding Sir Marion Lievre. Prolific try scorer for France. No advantage, so back they go. Well, Canada have had ample opportunity to clear their lines here, but they just keep putting themselves under pressure. This is the end of the advantage that's been played here, and Liev, well, lacking a little bit of control on the end of the line. Showed a good turn of speed, though, really taking the attack to Canada off the turnover ball. But their work at the breakdown so far, they're killing themselves, Canada. They're going to have to commit numbers in there because France are coming and coming. It's wave after wave. Counter ruck, competing for the ball, turnovers won. The referee played a very long advantage and now the decision's been made to take the shot at goal. Francois Ratier, centre frame from the Charente region in the southwest of France. Hugely respected uh, coach. So see, this is where the penalty came from, just creep inside the back foot. Well, maybe, no, it was a touch earlier than that, actually. That was Agricole just taking the ball to the line. The penalty was a bit earlier. But just the unforced errors there. Just the, maybe the lack of communication. And uh, you can't underestimate what a huge occasion this is for these, uh, these young players out here. As we've mentioned before, never been in such an environment. Pressure on, place in the, in the World Cup final at stake. High stakes here tonight in Jean Bois. Five minutes on the clock. Sandrine Agricol to open the scoring. Most experienced player in this French squad. Can she set them on their way? Yes, she can. So France leads. Canada by three points to nil. Just got a glimpse there of the uh, French coaching lineup, and they will be absolutely delighted with the start made here by France. And Sandrine Ogricol with the first successful penalty of the match. Last four French! Ah! Hold, hold White! Agricole, such a good reader of the game. Magli Harvey into uh, midfield gives uh, Elisa Allery a chance to run at the French defence up from fullback from the St. Anne de Bellevue Club in uh, Quebec. Dug out by uh, Stephanie Bernier. <laughs> Marie Pierre Pinot Reed. Leave it now, White, leave it. Another from uh, Quebec. Good, solid tackling from France in uh, midfield. A half chance, perhaps. Uh, Harvey appeared to be in space on the right. A testing kick for Christelle Ledouf. Yeah. Expertly done by the stand-in fullback, but she has so much experience. Ledouf did superbly well here with the oncoming pressure coming through there on that occasion from Harvey. She did extremely well to read the play. Her positional play was outstanding also. Tracked the ball across. While not able to take the ball cleanly, she managed to control her field position very well. Well played there by France. Okay. Yeah, the players can't hear themselves think. Uh, and there's a good atmosphere, I can assure you, in the presidential box as well. Caught a glimpse there of Bernard Lapasse, the uh, president of the IRB, Philippe Saint-André, French coach. Good to see both of them smiling, one at the, at the other. The beleaguered French uh, coach, perhaps I should say. It's a spun out from uh, Emily Belchos, the young teenage uh, Canadian outside half. Bernier, not the French inflection. Midway between the 10 meter line and the uh, 22 of France. Taken up by JC Murphy from the Aurora Barbarians. Belchos releasing Marchak now, then Magali Harvey. Good work uh, by the wing three quarter. 
Great turnover. Fantastic work on the ground, and I bet you Gael Mino will be the last person to get up. I don't even have to look. Well, it was taken on by Harvey, who did extremely well to get through Agricole here. And it was the fullback Luduff coming in. Look at the strong position she had over the ball there. Locked in by her supporting players, which allowed her to win that ball on the ground. And then it was Burke from Canada coming in over the top, who was penalised. Uh, Harvey's looking dangerous already, though, isn't she? Got a good turn of pace on the outside, on the right wing for Canada. And good to see her looking for work uh, as well. She uh, was a bit off colour against England the other day. She missed three out of four kicks which might have given uh, Canada the victory, but such as this game. But uh, you do have the rare off day taken at the back uh, by Coimba Diallo. And this is where France are dangerous, shielded there by the captain, Gael Mino, the release uh, to uh, Agricol into midfield, Shannon Izar with the, uh, the headgear, the kick, the chip ahead. Well taken though by Allery, she needs some help here and gets it from Brittany Waters. Canada there in numbers, forming the bridge, that's the hooker, Kim Donaldson. One of five returnees in this squad from the 2010 Rugby World Cup, they bring plenty of experience with them. But then again, so do the French. Ladanus. On the wing, she started the previous matches at uh, fullback. But quite adept at uh, playing the uh, wing three quarter role. Chauncey looking to uh, bring her forwards into action. Safi Ndiaye. Just losing that ball for the NDI, but uh, okay. Okay? you feel okay. Canada are just struggling really to get to grips with the speed of this game at the moment. They're very tight in their attack with where they're trying to hit. This is NDI taking the ball on. They're just, just unable to control it, losing it out the back. And the attention there from Marshak on the tackle. The first Canadian scrum was very solid. They'll take confidence from that. But at the moment, their ability to get the ball to the wide channels, they are struggling. Should be noted there are four members of that French pack from the uh, French club champions Montpellier. All of them later, but a huge hit coming in from Caroline Ladanus, from uh, Agricole rather. Magli Harvey. Again taking the ball up into the faces of the uh, French defenders. The game played at uh, quite a tempo. And this testament to the fitness of uh, all the women in the four teams uh, that have reached uh, the Cup semi-finals. And I think it's uh, true to say also that the teams that have got to the semi-finals are the countries that have invested mostly in women's rugby. A penalty here for France and could well be within reach of Sandrine Agricole. We'll know if she takes her, her helmet off, not for the time being, which indicates that she might go for touch and territory. Very, very impressive French, uh, French defensive line at the moment. But the attack is just coming one out at the moment. It's just one after one, one single run as well. I've got a question where, where the entry point was there from the captain, Mino. But anyway, it's play on. This was a huge hit through the midfield there. It's just relentless defense. Here's another one again. Mignon's at that occasion before it was Agricole. It's just relentless. They're going to have to really shift the point of their attack. At the moment, one out's not going to cut it against this French side. And Yai. Ways red. Sends it into contact. Standing off there is Asa Koita. Look for her to come more into the game as the, uh, as the game wears on. A set move in midfield, but well read by Canada's uh, number 13, Mandy Marchuk. But the advantage is still there with France. And the scrum half barking the orders as scrum halves do. Jennifer Tronsi from, uh, again, the Montpellier club, but driven backwards. Some incredible tackles going in out there at the moment. The options, so the huge long-range drop kick attempt. 
Well, Christelle Ledouf has played uh, fly half on a number of occasions. She's also played fullback on a number of occasions, specifically so back in uh, 2006. Keep coming! Into the wide open spaces. Well, that's the idea, but Ledouf has uh, fallen back into that fullback role. And then acres of space on the near side here. Filled there by the scrum half. Stephanie Bernier taken back into the uh, keep coming, 22. Keep coming, you keep coming. Troncy has this one. Oh, what a kind bounce that was for uh, Canada. The, th the tight head prop goes to ground. This is the hooker, Kim Donaldson. Crowded into touch, bundled into touch by the powerful uh, Safi and Look at the last foot of the rock. Well, she wasn't wanting the ball on that occasion, was she? The Canadian hooker there, Donaldson, in the eye world. We know what power she has in attack. This is another example of the huge tackling going on through the midfield. It is frantic out there at the moment. We're seeing turnovers left and right. Both teams lacking just a touch of accuracy at the moment. But there is plenty of physical want out there from both teams. They really want to get into each other's faces. Some good slick passing here from the French. And away goes uh, Ladanus. The quick offload as France look to uh, keep momentum here Agricole shoveling it in field to uh, NDI once more shortlisted player for woman player of the year the many options for Agricole just keeping the pressure on and pushing Canada back deep into the 22 Keep working on the last foot of the roof, okay? Agricole That's reading the play well. Up. There is a lot of space in the uh, in the back three here for Canada at the moment because they've been stretched far and wide with their defensive line. And the fullback Alari, she's got an awful lot of ground to cover there. Agricole's going to pick that off all day. She had an exceptional game against uh, Australia in the last uh, pool match to determine who was likely to go through to the uh, Cup semi-finals. Relentless pressure from France oh, again. Back as indeed uh, there was against Australia, 17-3. to It's a marvellous record, this, that uh, the French uh, have. Only two tries are scored against them in their Six Nations Grand Slam campaign. And none in this tournament. We see the work rate coming across here from the Canadians. Everybody is desperate out there. Desperate. Why was well, pretty much last chance rugby, isn't it? When we get to this stage, semi-final of a competition, it's about the moment, it's about the now, and uh, they know it out there, but they're going to have to up the accuracy levels on both sides here. Well, Koyumba Diallo seem to be up there for a very long time. Almost as high as the Tour Eiffel, not too far from where we are here at the Stade Jean Bois. Just tipped forward by a Canadian hand. Just three points on the board, 16, 17 minutes of play. Andrea Burke, 32 year old. The timing was outstanding there to get through onto Tronky, the number nine there for France to disrupt her, unfortunately, knocking it on in the tackle as well. But every Eight ball is <laughs> it's priceless, priceless out there, isn't it? Very precious possession. Hardly time to take a breather. There's no issue where her arm is. You need to work hard to get that lined up. There's no issue there. Canadian strum looks very solid, though, it doesn't it early. It's, uh, whereas you, you feel France have got the upper hand, certainly line out wise, with their ability to drive, their mauling ability. The scrum looks very solid from Canada. Yeah, Pino Reed, she's got to work it out here against the LOD Poktaris. Here they come. What a wonderful scrum, what a powerful scrum. Great drive forward there by the uh, the Canadian eight against the bigger opponents. France have retained possession. Troncy. Agricole, she wasn't doesn't want to give a bad ball out to, to her uh, colleagues. Otherwise, Gail Mino, the captain, will have something to say about it. Surely that was forward, yeah. The uh, referee's assistant on the far side. Just switching on her microphone, you might have seen her in the background. Very good work in contact, Nadia again, it's me, I'm trying to get it through the hands very quickly, but just a flat line of attack there. Very good spot from the assistant referee. 
working as three, so important. There's so much going on out there that uh, all the assistance that uh, O'Reilly can get from both Inwood and Daniels is vital out there. And of course, we have him play also the uh, television match official for this game as well. Got a glimpse there of Caroline Ladano, a prolific club the point scorer for Lons on Bern. I don't see an issue with what she's doing that's going to prevent you getting your bind. Please, sorry? There's no issue with what she is doing that's preventing you getting your bind. I need you to work harder to get that bind in. Difficult to get a hold on uh, Portari's jersey by the uh, bind, okay? sound of things. Interesting though, isn't it? Because we don't read it. She's dominating. This Canadian scrum's dominating. Yet the referees targeted her. Well, they take such pride in the scrimmaging. There we are. Straight arm bind. That's what the referee is looking for. And this time it's the French who get the drive on. Turning. Legally or illegally. The uh, Canadian eight. But they get away with it. Now then into the wide open spaces, forcing uh, Le Duf to sprint over to cover this one. Up from fullback is her opposite number, Elahi. Good work by Elahi. There also is Brittany Waters. Le Duf in uh, a heap of trouble here. The French are back there in close support. The ball has gone forward. Referee O'Reilly waiting for a Canadian advantage. Arms are in the air, punching the air. Terrific pressure there by uh, the Canadians and in particular Elisa Allery, but good vision as well, putting that kick in. She's under a little bit of pressure there and Anna Kane Belcher, she shifts the ball into the hands of, into the hands of uh, Marshak who knocks it through there, but Nudaf yes. way out of position there, yeah. under pressure, trying to run herself out of trouble. Look at the good work here from the Canadian back line. We spoke about Thanks. how precious this ball is, the counter rucking, the ability to get beyond the ball. Very well played Canada. And Waters having the presence of mind to release uh, uh, Le Duff. Because so many penalties have been given in that area. And the, uh, the women certainly uh, been studying the rule book. But what a kick that was from Mandy Marchek. Probably one of the uh, world's best uh, centres. And the vision to spot uh, the gap and a half That's chance. Him, yeah. and Gail Mino, she won't want to leave the field, that's for sure. Over 40 caps, and this is her second uh, Women's Rugby World Cup. Made her debut against Scotland in the 2010 version. It says a lot about Gail Mino that her best memory is the 2010 semi-final at Guildford in England when France played New Zealand but lost. She has a chance here to lead her team into the final for the very first time. Penalty Canada. Quickly taken, but uh, no. What will Canada do here? Will they ask Harvey to go for the post or will they kick for territory? Little uncertainty. Russell. Well, she's asked uh, Marcher to come up. Well, as I said, Harvey wasn't firing in all cylinders against uh, England the other day with a boot. This is the penalty while well, standing up, driving in on the angle again. Zizano on that occasion there. I think she could have been penalised about three or four offences. The previous scrum, France deliberately wheeled it. That shows what pressure they feel under. Then we come. Opportunity win. And the throw's not straight. Focus. Yeah, it's high shoulder. The most disappointing thing is when the opposition aren't really contesting for the ball and stuff, like you've got to get these things right. And as I say, everything from both sides out there, it seems frantic, doesn't it? And uh, I think it's, you know, moments like this when those, when those little injury breaks in play, that Kelly Russell's really trying to, go out, trying to go out, get her hands back on the situation here and calm her team down. They've got to feel confident about their scrummaging and they've got to take a lot of heart out of it. They've got to calm themselves down across the ground. So defensive scrimmage for France. Five metres out from their own try line and Canada get the nudge on. And Dai again the saviour, but the ball is loose. As Lievre spins on her heel and gets the ball away. Now then, Canada will need to maintain their concentration here, get the throw right. It's time for cool heads, isn't it? 
They're able to scrummage. They're loving this aspect of the game here tonight. They're loving the challenge of this big French pack. And they're responding. This time, they've got it right. Well, this is the first a real test of the uh, French defence. And remember, no try has been scored against the French in this tournament. But that could all change here. Was that uh, Maul pulled down intentionally by the French? No, says referee O'Reilly. And Canada have it once more. A metre short as uh, Pino Reid has a go herself. Waiting there is Bernier, the scrum half. Referee O'Reilly right on the spot. So well. Canada denied for a split second. Well coming up with the ball in that situation is something dire but you'll see it's totally illegal play on the ground by her she's held on she's a tackler now she's rolling with it the camera work is superb the referee didn't quite quite have the angle to spot that one it goodness be this case for penalty yellow card in that situation well even the referee's manager Joel Juice is smiling here sitting next to you uh, Simon it's the first time he's smiled all week at me <laughs> oh, that's great yeah absolutely fantastic good camaraderie so let's see 23 24 minutes Canada trail by three points to nil they'll fancy this won't they they certainly will they'll dig the heels in here look at the determination on the face uh, of the Canadian scrum half uh, Stephanie Bernier here it comes into midfield quickly looking for Marchak but look again at the power of uh, Marjorie Mayons uh, Number 12 for France, prevented a certain try there, but the danger is still there for France. And they won the scrum. It seems to me, every time the whistle goes, we're getting fist pumps, we're getting high fives on both sides. The effort is outstanding out there. 10, 12, 13 for France on that occasion. It's Agrico, Mayans and Izzar, superb defensive effort through the midfield. The scrum got turned slightly. The aggression of putting the ball, a bit of intention in there, isn't there? From Bernier, anyway, scrum again, and we're going scrum, scrum, scrum. Yeah, we don't mention the hit these days, but wait for the uh, the Canadian shove here as they get themselves into position. The binding a little problematic on this side uh, still. So much depending on the outcome of this match for both teams. Cracking side. game, cracking atmosphere. Hips and shoulders, same direction, same to you, please, okay? Drive straight. And probably the coolest person inside the Stade Jean Bois is a 39 year old uh, civil servant from County Meath in Ireland. That's Helen O'Reilly. I don't, want you, I don't want your shoulders coming on out there from the players. Hits, okay? Keep the shoulders up in a positive position, please, OK? Oh, She's doing it all day, Ref, was the call there. From uh, Pino Reid on that occasion once again. Oh, lots of chat. Right. Pino Reid on this side, uh, 1 metres 80 tall, 93 kilograms. Crouch! So solid. Yep. Portaris. Points! Sess! 107 kgs. And in difficulty here, down on one knee as France come again and uh, Troncy is caught in possession. Now can Canada turn it over here? Now France uh, have it well covered. But that is, she is uh, the PA, the prop, the pillar. Not the best of kicks. Allery, well picked up. Amazing run from her, looking to release the outside backs now then. A chance here perhaps for Marchak, she's got Burke on her inside shoulder. Good tackle once more from Marjorie Mayons, and that has brought the crowd to their feet on the far side. But Canada have stolen it, Russell will set it up just inside the French 22. Bernier to Pinot Reed. But look who's in there. We get a mitts on the ball, Safi Andiaya just looking towards the referee. Thanks very much, merci. You don't have anything to ask, no? Well, Safi and I just superb on that occasion here, but we'll see here the counter-attack. And Salari looking to open up play on the outside. 
No problem with that tackle. What a superb tackle from Mayans, getting ahead, maybe on the wrong side. But on this occasion here, Jack. Pino Rich is too high going into contact there, opening Jack, yourself up me? to the choke tackle, tying it up, and then I, it's I too easy for the big much. French number just eight. Have to put it through one of the AORs. I just want to check a tackle back over there, please. Interesting use and good use of the TMO on this occasion by Helen O'Reilly. She's not happy with the uh, tackle. She saw a, a tip tackle, spear tackle on that occasion there. But uh, everything looked fine to us at first view here. She yep. didn't go through the horizontal. I thought she was well controlled. But uh, yeah. I applaud the referee for going back and checking these uh, situations here. Potential danger. We'll see it here. There's a tackle up in the air. She jumps into it, Jack, but she controls very, her very back to the ground. I think it's sore. good refereeing, an easy decision for the TMO. So let's have another look. You see she jumped into the tackle, but the French player there, I didn't get a number on who was actually involved in that tackle there. Your recommendation very good call. is a yellow card oh, no. against no. 11. The TMO is going to call the yellow card. I can't help but feel they've got Jack, that one wrong. Jack, confirm that for me, please? Well, what more could she have done? She brought it back down to earth. I thought Unless she... you let go, that's the only okay, question. and restart with a penalty I back thought she here. controlled, Ladegna controlled it very well because it was a dangerous situation given the player that Alaria jumped into the tackle. Right, please. 11 that, white. Oh, this is tackle. one of those really and unfortunate lift, situations. Yellow card and restart with a penalty over and here. Unfortunately, when we go back to the 11, game of uh, France-Australia, we had a yellow card that turned the game, didn't we, on a yeah, rather yeah, contentious yellow card. Just in, the crowd unhappy, and I can understand that as well, and uh, disappointing. Yeah, it is. So let's hope it doesn't spoil the game, and uh, Caroline Ladanus, she'll spend the next uh, 10 minutes... Uh, in the sin bin. Come to here. Controversial decision. Jeff, we need to sort out something with the palms. On the word of uh, Jeff Warren, who is the television match official from England. Great, thanks a million. Just how crucial these decisions can be, and uh, as we say, well, anyway, it's an opportunity for three points for Canada. And that'd be good for these three points. Three all would be a very fair reflection on where this game sits after 27. I just, uh, just in my mind earlier when Agricole was having a shot at goal, when it's the first time ever that I've heard a stadium silent in France. And, uh, you know, that's part of the French culture and you hear the whistling going on now and that's a dissatisfaction with the... Uh, well, once again, we're almost back at science. This is an unbelievable change of culturally uh, for the French rugby public. It certainly is. The signs up on the big screens. Please respect the kicker, and that's exactly what the French have done. And uh, Magali Harvey, she's put the disappointment of those missed kicks against England behind her. And she's drawn level, drawn Canada level with France at three it's points like all. Yeah. Now, can they take advantage of the extra player with uh, wing three quarter Carlin Ladanus? Shown the yellow card for a disputed tip tackle. And is now in the sin bin for the next uh, nine and a half minutes or so. Pulsating stuff here then from France and uh, Canada in the second semi-final. And uh, away he goes, Andrea Burke uh, on the angle into midfield. Wonderful angle there from Burke to uh, the loose prop, uh, Pino Reed, who's uh, seen a lot of possession in this uh, first half. And they'll have to come all the way back. As much as we're enjoying Pino Reed scrummaging and the work she's doing there, I don't think Canada wanted to see her in that position of first receiver there on that occasion, did they? They had about a seven on two that was stacking up, and they were just slightly fought past, but a very good call. Slightly fought, that's enough. The assistant referee and referee, they got that call spot on. But a, a great counter-attack, great burst and determination from Andrea Burke. The two midfield pairings have been outstanding thus far, both defensively and in attack as well. Burke on that occasion, incisive break. And the interesting thing is that Mayons and Isa and Marchek and Burke for Canada know each other's plays so well because they've met on the sevens circuit and that's something we've uh, referred to uh, more than once during the last week or so. The influence of sevens on this tournament, the number of sevens players and 60 in total I think uh, representing their respective countries in this tournament. So the penalty from uh, Agricole. 
Captain. Not the longest kick. Every time at the scrum with the binds, okay? But safely Thank you. in the touch on the far side. Ten minutes to the break. It's a much closer affair this one than the uh, first semi final between England and Ireland. Won comfortably by England, 40 points to seven. Steamrolled Ireland. Winners over New Zealand, of course, at the pool stage. France trying to get that uh, rolling ball which has been so effective in this tournament going for Montpellier players the French champions in the van there for France led by the uh, second row Asa Koita from the Bobigny club on the outskirts of Paris good hands bundling the touch there was Christelle Ledouf by Magali Harvey France then maybe down to 14 players but they're not downhearted far from it outstanding uh, more there by the French eight there they worked this extremely well love the awareness of Tronchi here with Le Duff. they knew they had play Mayans coming round as well held up the defence but you've got to admire the cover defence and the effort there coming in from the right winger on that occasion there was Harvey Canada try and work it away saved a certain try there Canada at the line out Marchak scuffed that one drops into midfield now then Marion Lievre she loves to run but she gets a little space in which to manoeuvre Christelle Ledouf five meters outside the Canadian 22 Agricole finds Mayence and runs straight into the tackle of Brittany Waters Waters back in defense immediately as uh, another wave of attack comes in the form of Andai. And Saf, as she's known to her colleagues, Agricol to the lumbering number four, Marine Denadai. And they'll get a penalty. They'll get the penalty just outside the 22. Lev getting treated there on her ankle. She looked to be in a lot of pain here. As we see Burke coming in on the tackle. She gets pinned in there by that. She's got nowhere to go. And on that occasion, but the referee rightly penalising. This is where we see the ankle get. She just gets it caught underneath her there in the tackle. That one's going to hurt a bit. Well, she's up, back, hobbling around. An opportunity for Agricole. We know what a wonderful striker of the ball she is. And... Uh, Probably the best passage of play we've seen from France in the last 15 minutes or so. They managed to control possession there and bring their big runners, their power players into the game. We saw Diallo on shot there. She's been a bit quiet to date. They've got to get the hands into their big runners here and start to make inroads into this Canadian side. Sandrine Agricol sets it up. Five metres outside the Canadian 22. Looking to double France's tally here. Deathly hush all around the Stade Jean Bois. Concentrating. Looks up the posts. Right footed, head down. And Serge Betson will have enjoyed that one. Former flank forward for France. Textbook stuff from Sandrine Agricole. She's one of the most pure strikers of the rugby ball from the tee in this uh, Women's Rugby World Cup. Beautiful kicker of the ball. Uh, she's been studying to be a physiotherapist and sat her final exams uh, last month. I think she's something of a psychologist as well because she says that the position of outside half is the ultimate position for me, allows me to direct the game in a position that has a lot of responsibility. She just shrugs off the psychological pressure. I tell you what, when it's a position that's easy to play when you're behind a pack that's dominating like this at the moment, isn't it? Sitting in the armchair, controlling things. Well, this certainly is the true test uh, for oh, Canada. Oh. Harvey, she'll have a go. Just tipped up there by uh, Marjorie Mayons. Well, we asked the question before this match, which defence would be the strongest? And it could well come down to a, a matter of defences. Don't go in the side, 12 rounds! Canada on their toes. Take it back in! Chauncey back uh, to Shannon Izar. 
And Allery has spotted a huge gap over on the right off. Oh. Goodness me. My word. What an opportunity missed. Noticed it before when the kick chase line out of France is extremely poor. They're at sixes and sevens. And on this occasion here, we had the whole French team in from the goalpost to the touchline. That means there was 35 to 40 metres of space. All they had to do was get up there and they would have had acres to run into. But as it is, the forward pass okay. initially, great call by the referee. Time off. Well, Canada were the more resourceful team throughout uh, the game against England. They wasted numerous opportunities through handling errors. And uh, a team aspiring to become world champions can't afford such lapses of uh, concentration as this. Just have a look here, Alari. That's just, well, you, you question one, you question the support player. If she knows she's not on a strong hand, she can bring herself back in a bit closer. They had time. The important thing was to get the ball to the space. And how they get it there was with accurate passing. On that occasion, the technique led her down there, Alari, who's been very good to date, I must say. I think her positional play has been excellent and her willingness to counter as well. But what an opportunity missed there. And we know that this game is played at this level, in this atmosphere. It's about small margins and uh, a real opportunity missed there with four to go until half time there for Canada. Uh, Canada were fourth uh, to France in the third and fourth playoff back in 2002 and again in 2006. The fourth to England in 1998. But this is a totally different uh, Canadian side. Huge on confidence. Well, that goes also for the French. As they drive over the uh, Canadian 10 metre line, Troncy out to Agricol. Putting the ball, or attempting to put the ball behind Magli Harvey, releasing Ellery. Oh, lovely show. And a dash downfield, the, the slice and dice from the fullback. The final pass not going to hand though. Well, they're mostly forwards out on the right uh, for France as uh, NDI has a go. This is Lievre not looking where she was passing. Recovering there for France is uh, Manon Andre. Three minutes to the break as Agricole sets off on the angle. Tronsi, Portaris. Tronsi again, but she's well uh, marshaled there by uh, Stephanie Bernier. And she seems to be uh, injured in that uh, little confrontation and uh, challenge. Kelly Russell was there for Canada, the captain, and uh, number eight quickly back on her feet as uh, Diallo has a go herself on the narrow side. France, remember, still down to uh, 14 players, Ladanus in the sin bin, and uh, Canada also effectively down to 14 players as uh, the scrum half uh, Bernier doesn't look too comfortable at the moment. Ledouf on the to Shannon Iza from the Lille club only began playing rugby some two seasons ago in college but finds herself uh, in the thick of the action looking for a place in the uh, top tournament for women that's uh, the Women's Rugby World Cup on home turf Agricol again peppering the uh, near touchline here And Canada still down to 14, but France uh, back to a full 15, and they've scored three points. When uh, Ladanus was in the sin bin, so no harm done. Well, there's Agrico once again, and there's nothing you can do about that as a defending fullback. You always believe any kick that lands within the five is a great kick, and uh, you can't not going to criticise a fullback for not covering that one off. But uh, it's it, no one around. End to end stuff. It's just unfortunately that each play seems to be breaking down. This is where we're going to see the injury here coming through, coming through, and she seems to have done her knee on that occasion there. Bernier, who's uh, yeah, is uh, preparing out there the brace. No problem. I'll have a her ankles seem to give way under her in uh, attempting that tackle. This is unfortunate. Let's have a look here, driving through, working hard. And his ankles held her knee initially. Let's hope uh, that's okay. As we've got the replacements out there already, the decision made very quickly. Yeah, it's uh, Julian uh, Zussman, another 
returnee from 2010. So uh, she does bring experience with her, the 27-year-old from Atu, Ottawa. Zussman started on uh, against Spain on the wing. Girls, it's going to get. It's going. Yeah, it's going to take a minute. Guess. And it's going to take some time for uh, the medical support to get their protocols right and uh, get their systems in place. And uh, the players, well, they can be comforted in the fact that they have. Uh, I can hear you now, Jeff. Excellent uh, correct, medical support uh, here in Marcusi where Great. the uh, opening rounds have been played over the last 10 days or so that's the centre for French rugby and here again at Jean Bois this was the break from Malari which is superb play but about that time you've got to control possession and this is where <laughs> the momentum shifts again it swings and roundabouts in this game and Dai she's a very powerful runner isn't she shifts it to the outside that was a huge hit coming in there, looking for the spot tackle was Blackwood coming in there. On Liev to make the spot tackle there, try to disrupt the play. So Stephanie Bergnier's game is over. And she will be headed off, uh, ferried off rather to the uh, medical centre. And uh, no little discomfort. And uh, greeted with applause from the crowd. They love their rugby, don't they, here? in France and in Paris at the home of Stade Francais what a marvellous home it is Time back on there, Jeff. so we wish Stephanie Bernier well as we approach the break here France leading Canada by 6 to 3 and uh, it's advantage Canada nudged forward by a French hand no advantage coming first one on the knock on by White second one by Red the way we've seen the uh, momentum swing in this one, I think Canada would be quite happy to get into this half-time break uh, at just 6-3 down. They had a really dominant period there, but unfortunately they just sort of let, let go a little bit of the control that they did have, and they were establishing up front. Not able to take advantage of the, of the, the fact that France were down to 14. That was a 10-minute period that finished 3 all. Well, when we look at uh, recent results between uh, these two countries, well, just spotted there, Elisa Allery has uh, gone into the scrum half berth. We're just commenting that France uh, lost the first meeting of these uh, teams last November, but 29 to 17, then went on to win the 11 6 at Amneville. So it's no surprise that it is a close call, a close run thing between Canada and France as we uh, approach the break. Important scrum then for Canada. The decoy runner was uh, Canadian centre Andrea Burke in midfield. Taken up by uh, Kelly Russell. Hold, hold, 12. Belchos boots the ball downfield as the clock turns to red. One more chance for France before the break. Two, two holds. Ledouf. They want to get this ball off the field yeah. when this is crazy stuff here by Canada. Lievre spots the gap, but straight into the hands of the dangerous uh, Magali Harvey, running away from a supporter. Whoa, that was a huge shoulder charge. But Magali Harvey, she's made of sterner stuff, may she may have been winded. Penalty kick, captain, option of a kick here. Down there, down her. Yeah, that's the option. That's a solid challenge. I'm so sure that uh, the French very girl had uh, very careful on the late hit a chance to the kick, okay? pull out. Uh, the French director might want to, to have another look at that, or might want us to have a chance to have another look at it. Well, it's interesting. The, the assistant referee has gone to where the ball stopped, which I unfortunately, Joel Zuz has walked away from me. I'd love to ask him the question. I'm pretty sure on where the ball lands. And the fact that it ro rolled and rolled and rolled and wow. rolled has now brought it into kicking range. So a, a contentious way to finish the first half. Here I am suggesting they've got to get the ball off the field here, not to give away a penalty at their end. The late charge brings them right down. The assistant referee ruling that that's where the penalty kick should be taken. So we'll see here, here's the kick. It's just, it's just a straight body check. She turns into it and watch it run and run and run. I can't help but feel that's not quite right. Well, the challenger, the challenge came from Ladanus, who's already seen one yellow card. Now, good spot. Had that been uh, picked up, that yellow 
Mark could well have turned to red, but as it is, it's Magali Harvey. Successful with her only kick so far in this. Two minutes into time added on to draw the team's level. And they will go in uh, to the shed, as we say, at the break. At six points all, and the broad smile in the face of Magali Harvey says it all. It's been a pulsating first half here in the second semi-final at the Stade Jean Bois. It's six points all between France and Canada. Don't go away. Welcome back to the atmospheric start Jean Bois for the second half of this second cup semi-final between France and Canada and they're tied up at six points all and we if we have anything like the uh, the game we had in the first half then we're in for a, a rousing second 40 minute period in determined fashion Gael Mignot the French hooker leads her team onto the field of play it couldn't be closer with Magli Harvey converting two uh, penalties for Canada and France's uh, inspirational outside half for Sandrine Agricole with two for the French, the tricolor is flying proudly around the start. Jean Boin here in the uh, southwest area of uh, Paris, not far from the uh, the River Seine. And we yet to uh, determine who will join England in okay, the final okay. next Sunday. We've already accounted for Ireland by a final scoreline of 40 points to seven. And they will be looking at this match, no doubt with great interest so here we go then with the second half the final 40 minutes of the semi-final the first big hit of the uh, second period on uh, Brittany Waters the Canadian left wing back to Belchos the testing kick for Ladanus uh, advantage pressure being applied by Harvey it's advantage here for France uh, caught by the shirt tails is Ladanus by uh, Mandy Marchak, the advantage quickly back with Canada. Harvey. Run away, wise! Started a career on the wing, has played fullback. Or started a fullback, rather. Last line of defence, and she had uh, no choice but to tackle. Great play. Karen Pacquan. Oh, cuts back inside over halfway up to the 10 metre mark. Well tackled there. Advantage! Agri call, it's. Uh, Advantage to France, ball lost forward by Canada. And the game at the top of the second half uh, played with the same high tempo as which the, the first half finished the replacement. This is Zussman. Come on to the wing. As Canada rearrange its uh, Allery at a scrum half in place of the injured uh, Stephanie Bernier. Allery. She's going oh, on. she threw straight through the middle, and this is going to be a challenge score for Canada. The stand in scrum half is a standout fullback for Canada. She is Elisa Allery. Oh, what a score! The big players have got to stand up on these occasions here. Nobody in the guard position around the ruck there. The defence was fragile to say the least. Gaping holes around the breakdown. Ellery sighted it beautifully. There's nothing Agricole, the standout number 10, can do for France in that situation there. Just have a look at the numbers off their feet, committing themselves. And there it is there, the show of the ball. Options were outside Ellery. Agricole was having a look outside. She had to set herself tight to that ruck and wait for support before she shifted out. Close down that area first and let, let the defence realign themselves off you. She didn't do it on that occasion. 
Probably the first foot she's put wrong all night because she's been tackling, she's been running, she's been kicking beautifully. And on that occasion there, a poor decision at the breakdown. You feel it's the big players here are the ones who are going to be going to make the difference. I know it sounds all very simple, but we saw the turnover. This is a conversion just wide, but the turnover was made by Who for Canada, which set the movement to light. It was Burke, and of course it was Marshak who were in there. And this is the end of it. Mallory does extremely well, identified the situation in front of her. 30 metres to run in. Beautifully taken try. What a start to the second half. And the best place guy to see that was the photographer behind the hoardings on the far side. And I should imagine, I know full well that Gareth Reese has a very important meeting uh, at Rugby Canada this very moment. He's got the screen on behind him. Well, he'll be uh, shouting loud and proud for Canada. But hang on, hold the back page. France can come right back into it here. Well, Sampson on this occasion, she was isolated. It's not really a ball you want your second rower having to deal with it on an occasion. And the backs needed to stand up and take ownership of that long kickoff. But Sampson, the second rower, floundering round there. Five metres scrum here. France with the immediate opportunity to hit back. And wherever you look around this ground, there are trickle of flags flying. Urging, willing France on here. Still problems on the far side of that scrum. She'll take her bind first and then you go after yeah. it, okay? Okay? Pino Reed and uh, Portaris. Crouch! Interesting conversation in the referee suggesting the tight hit. Portaris is going to bind first. Oh, she's in difficulty there on the right hand side of the French scrum, isn't she? In France, well, they've coughed up possession there as the Canada look to bring it away through. Marchak looking for Harvey. Harvey's away over the 22, giving chases my own. Harvey inside the Ledouf, launches away. Magali Harvey, can she go all the way in at the corner? Canada oh. goal! What a fantastic try! Backs to the wall, right on their own try line. They stole the scrum, and I tell you what, the loose head prop, Marie Pierre Pino Reed, can take much credit for that. But the pace then of Magali Harvey, the confidence of the Canadian, look at this. Superb scrummaging here from the Canadian eight. Great control here, well she picks it out of the scrum, and then it's Allery, she does well, and then it's the handling under pressure here, the quick hands, the French alignment, well it was thrown to bits, it was in disarray, wasn't it? And then it was down and it's all about one person, and that person is Magalie Harvey, inside out, the balance, the poise, I love the way she's been shouted to the line by her teammate in support there, I can't see who it was, what a finish, 80 metres, running from Harvey, well done to the Canadian eight. This game has been turned on its head. It certainly has, and what a great sight it is uh, to see uh, Stephanie Bernier being carried out back onto the field. Strapped up, she may be, she missed the try from uh, Stephanie Bernier. This from uh, Elisa Allery. And she may have missed Magali Harvey's try. A strange kicking action from uh, Magali Harvey, but it is very, very effective, isn't it? Wow. Two steps and a stab. Brilliant play there from Harvey. The Canadian eight, just superb in the scrummaging. Love the finish, the balance here, inside out. Leduff squared up, taken on the inside. And then it's this foot race to the line. Great effort coming back there by Liev. She tried everything, but it was all in vain there. This could well be the try of the tournament for Magali Harvey, shortlisted for Women Player of the Year, and she's living up to that billing. Roll away, seven white! 18 to 6. The game has turned on its head here in the last five minutes. Canada with two tries. France have kept their side of the score sheet clean of tries in the opening three matches. But Canada have broken through twice, through that young lady, Elisa Allery, the stand-in scrum half. And now the right winger, Magali Harvey, and they come again, looking to secure possession through Zussman. And the ball 
spun out once again to Harvey. Look at the strength. Ah, oh, lovely offload. Just uh, couldn't quite grasp it, could uh, Mundy Marchak. Cool heads. That's what's required now. Time off. Well, time off gives us all the chance to catch our breath again, does it? Harvey has the opportunity. I'm not sure who was that. Under the attention of three defenders, and that is spilled with a 40-metre run into the line with no one in front. So Portale, as we've seen in... The well, having problems from Marie-Pierre Pinot-Ried on the loose head for Canada has been replaced by Chobé. Well, Canada want to round it off here, could well do as well through the uh, number six, the flanker. That's the JC Murphy pulled down two meters short. And Canada now have their tails up. They can sense that they will go through to the final where once again they will meet England. But we're only eight minutes into the second half. Just the lack of composure from France. They completely rattled. The crowd are trying to rouse them here. Does extremely well, Murphy. Unfortunately, she neglected the support she has on the inside. And you'll see a loose head prop there. Who we've spoken about an awful lot tonight. And Pino Reed tracking up there, bundled into touch. That could have been just about game point there, couldn't it? You feel there'd be no coming back after one more try, even though there's half an hour to run. Momentum swings massively in favour here at Canada. France have got to try and regroup. So Canada challenge at the line out and a secure possession against the throw in of the French captain Gael Migno. And what a game Elisa Allery is having at the scrum half. Started at fullback, claimed the opening try for Canada. And this time it's Andrea Burke. It's all Canada at the moment. Allery once again, Harvey coming in off the right wing, looking for work. This is the captain, Kelly Russell, five meters short. In goes a Kim Donaldson, the hooker. Harvey is there yet again. Driven forward, driven hard and low. Asking questions again of the uh, French defence. This ball won't go far, but Belchos wants it. That outside half. Clapping the hands, give it to me. There it goes. Into midfield. Sidestepping the tackle was uh, Andrea Burke. The French are there in numbers, but Burke, look at her. Making sure that possession is retained. Ndi again looking up to hold up the, the ball carrier. And has done exceptionally well. Ledouf, anywhere will do, downfield to lift the pressure. But the pressure is back on through Julian Zussman. Well, I have to tell you, Women's rugby is the fastest growing team sport in the world and on the evidence of what we've seen over the last uh, couple of hours one can easily see how, why and how. Much better kick chase, much better energy out of the French on that occasion. There. It's desperate times for them. But at the same time, 12 points is not insurmountable. The amount of mistakes we saw in the first half has got to give them belief that they're going to get opportunities. They know they've got the big ball carriers. They know they have the power runners capable of breaking Canada apart as well. They must remain calm. And once again, Canada would appear to have picked off the uh, French line out. Nothing going right for France at the moment and Canada will get the scrum. Well, there's some exciting stuff going on in uh, Canadian rugby, that's for sure. And we congratulate uh, the Canada women's sevens team. They are the new world champions. Uh, the new university world champions, that is. Claimed in Brazil last weekend and further recognition. As if any was required of uh, yet another success for the Canadian development program. A lot of funding swung uh, women's rugby. The way of women's rugby in Canada, and bearing in mind, of course, that uh, rugby is now an Olympic sport. An Olympic effort here, Herculean effort from Canada. Russell it was from the base of the scrum. This is Marchak. Ball falling into the hands of uh, Sandrine Agricol. This could well be her swan song. The book is closed, is what she says. But there could yet be a final chapter to be written. France trail 18 to 6 as Brittany Waters brings the ball forward. 
runs into Asa Koita, the French number five. In France, the French forwards not having their own way at all, as Canada have taken the game to France right from the outset. Again, finding good space there was uh, Andrea Burke. Very quickly up was Zussman, the replacement. Did she release? Yes, she did. France on the defensive yet again. Stay up, White! Blackwood takes it up. Touch forward. Advantage! Advantage is there for France. She got the second one. <laughs> <laughs> seemed, to be, uh, seemed to be a knock on, didn't it? But yes. uh, you just feel Ludruf is struggling a little one bit positionally, three. don't you, there, when one she's. Uh, there's a lot of space, a lot of space to be kicked into yes. there. Love the chase through there from Zeus, when she did three, extremely well. Three. The enthusiasm, well, we're going to see the very one powerful one front one row has been three. changed already. Heads going in everywhere. Here's the chase coming through from Zeusman. Did extremely well. Ludov does well to make the tackle. Well, it's been a great uh, opening 52 minutes for the uh, for those two front rowers who've come off. Leith and Donaldson. And on come Laura Russell and Olivia de Marchant. Olivia. Or Laura Russell, rather, a sister of Kelly Russell. The Russell sisters play for the Toronto Nomads. And there's huge emotion, as one might expect, in the dugout. Wearing 17, that's uh, Olivia de Merchant. A powerful looking tight head from the Woodstock Wildmen. Wouldn't you just love to play for the Woodstock Wildmen, Simon? <laughs> that shut you up. <laughs> I'm just looking at your hair. Because <laughs> the note I've got here, <laughs> Olivia de Marchand, she has fuzzy hair. <laughs> so 13, 14 minutes into the second half, two tries. Uh, have changed the complexion of this game completely. Okay, let's go. Ca Captain, no issue. Some consternation perhaps on the uh, French bench as they look to make a substitution. Under pressure, Chauncey gets it away, but it'll be a Canadian line-out, and that line-out uh, has uh, proved to be very, very uh, competent and efficient as well in the second half, certainly, when two line-outs have been stolen on the French put-in. Even with the changes that have been made in the front row, we've seen another change about to be run. France just feeling no confidence, are they, about their scrum, and you could just see all they wanted to do was get that ball in and away and get it out of there as possible. They're not wanting to scrummage at the moment. 25 to go, you're 12 behind. There is no need to panic. And someone's really got to try and regain composure within this French side, and the big players have got to stand up, because I tell you what, for Canada, they're running things at the moment. That's the best ball of all at the back of the line, now top of the line, now Paquin it was who claimed it. Waters finds space for herself. Release Reds! Release Reds! And the Canadians are crowding over on the narrow side. But guilty of holding on to possession. And a chance here for Canada to clear downfield. Waters on that occasion, caught in position. It was the replacement who's come on. Lovely kick downfield there by Agricole. It was a replacement on there. Pulbanu, you see, huge hit coming and She gets in. She's first over the ball. The moment the shoulders hit, though, ruck call. Okay, We're not getting a clear ruck call from the referee, which is probably not helping the players. France have contested the playoffs four times in five uh, Women's Rugby World Cup tournaments. Will they be denied? Once more, have a place in the final. Wait. This time, France Don't go in the side, secure possession at the back through uh, 
the number six, Kumba Diallo. And now the French crowd really getting behind their team. And the French need every ounce of support they can get here. Agricol, not the best to pass it to Mayans, picked up there by Marcha. She's got support, oh, Belchos. Ah, she'll be annoyed with herself. The question you'd ask yourself here, why take the ball out of that mall? Seven. They had such good structure going on. There was no call by the referee to use the ball whatsoever. They were moving the whole time, trying to force the play on that occasion there. And it was the experiences in there of Mayans as well as Agricole, which went to the breakdown of communication. But as it is, they, they dodge a little bit of a bullet on the outside with Beltros knocking the ball on. But again, France have got to go to a scrum. They don't want to be in this phase of the game. Letitia Grand comes on, okay. wearing a 20 on. for France. Binds, Sess, hold, hold. Eyeball, eyeball, eyeball. Okay. Not for the first time, the front row has got a ground. As I said, you get your bind first, then you get your bind. Both of are losing your bind and slipping down. You first. And then you, okay? It's amazing how things often, uh, when the referee changes sides, how that can tend to correct things, doesn't it? We'll see on the scrum here. Yeah, two new props on the far side, but the problem remains the same. Set! Hold it! Hold it! French get it back somehow. Ledouf hoofs it downfield. An awkward ball for Julian Zussman. Waters back to Zussman. Tackle release, 20 release. Canada have it. Ellery, not sure quite uh, who called for that one, but it's uh, in the uh, firm grip of uh, JC Murphy. The uh, blindside wing forward. Kick out wide, well that's not the best of kicks, finding uh, Shannon Iza, she's got pace, she's got company now as well, in the form of Majdari Mayons. But again, France Koffer possession, a little panic perhaps. Panic from the kick out by Canada, wasn't it? But then you've got to love the work rate coming out of it. Once again, it's the midfield. It was Burke on this occasion here. She just slips. He's a love the ball play out the back door to Mayans. She thinks she's an opportunity. And who gets there? Well, it's her opposite number, Burke, who gets there under pressure and absolutely nails her, forcing the knock on. This Canadian midfield has really impressed me as a combination. They've worked extremely hard, run very well balanced, strong runners through the midfield, but I'm loving their work rate. The tackles they're getting through, superb play. Look for the number eight here and Captain Russell to launch something off the base. Yeah, she's had a quiet game so far as uh, Kelly Russell. There she is. Did she fumble? No, she didn't. Last foot, last foot. Allery. Oh, she's a bundle of energy, isn't she? Uh, Elisa Allery stepped in for the injured Bernier towards the end of the first half. Another sevens exponent in this uh, Canadian Green setup. Threads. That's fine. Oh, France. Oh, good work. They've stolen it. Diallo, this is uh, Agricol, but up very quickly was uh, Magli Harvey out of position, and Marchak now has it. Can she keep the ball alive? Yes, she can. Superb steal. Brilliant steal, but it will be a Canadian line-out. That's Ladanus. Substitution red. Bundled five into and touch. Two. Five and two. It's just going both ways at the moment, isn't it? And uh, while we, we're still with 20 to go, well, just under 20 to go, and we've got a 12 points deficit. You still don't feel this game is safe at all for two Canada. Yeah, they look very capable of breaking out and scoring points, as they look just as capable of making mistake and giving away points. It's uh, it's a tough one to call. Well, I just feel there's more drama to come in this match. Canada look uh, to have a comfortable lead here, but uh, somebody needs to steady the ship, I fear. Short line out called by Canada. Clean catch. Belchos. Again, it's a, a predetermined move bringing Pacquan in on the angle. The energetic uh, 
open side wing forward. Run away, wise to Canada. Come again against the backdrop of uh, the chorus of uh, La Marseillaise as Julian Zussman. Danger becoming isolated, runs back into. Uh, looks for support and gets it. Marchak. Now, what will she do? Takes on the uh, the French Stay on your feet, Red. defense, but she's got the ball to ground, presented it well. Or did she? Ah. Well, she was under pressure there, weren't they? It was very good French defense there, particularly. Mike Oita gives them an opportunity. We know the kicking capability here of Agriculture. She's got to find a decent touch so they can set up this drive. It looks to be the only way. That's a beautiful strike. Looks to be the only way that they can break down this Canadian side. Their structures are very good. All they have to do now is make good decisions with the ball at the back of that mall. Show patience and stick to what they do and they do it so well. Sandrine Agricol has a word uh, with her outside backs. But it's uh, one of the forwards uh, that's uh, receiving attention at the moment as the further numbers, substitutions the are made. Uh, Sandra Rabier, she wears uh, 19 for France. From the Corn Club, plenty of experience, over 60 caps to her name. Climbing high was Diallo, and here comes the drive. Shielded at the back by Gael Mino. France come in hunt of that uh, try, which uh, could bring them well back into this match. The crowd on their feet uh, on both uh, sides of the Stade Jean Bois. Breaking away is Diallo. It's there for Ndi. There she is picking it up. The ball was out. Good work, uh, good anticipation there by uh, Mary Jane, Mary Jane Kirby rather. The Canadian replacement wearing 18. Advantage France. They must surely make Canada pay here. Andiai turns. Ladanus goes in to give her support. And the backs are screaming for the ball out wide. Koita. The lock forward arrives to a lend a helping hand. But running or pulling down the mall, says referee O'Reilly. Well, I think one thing's certain when they're not going to take the scrum. <laughs> Got to be knocking this straight into the corner. And patience with the drive. They just lost their shape again. When Mio gets the ball at the back, you feel she's got to be the one driving that ball and just holding the control as we see the start from say players here and numbers looking on. Supporting their feminine counterparts. Canada don't want to give away a penalty here. Will they challenge the line out? No, they won't. Diallo again. Now then, wait for the drive and wait for the roar as well from the huge supporting crowd here. Who has the ball? This time, perhaps. Diallo. Will she break clear? She's over the try line and the referee is right on the spot. There's life in this game yet. France have clawed one back. Well, they used this tactic against Australia in the final game that they played. But they threw the ball to Mayans in the line-out, the midfielder, and she set it up. She's involved in this again, as you'll see. Here she is, the blonde here, and she latches on with their number 11 on that occasion. Of course, it is Legano. Anyway, it's not them who provide the impetus. Of course, it's the number 8. Safin and die. she does extremely well. Too powerful for their sheer numbers there from France. Well played by France, and number eight. Well, she's been the inspiration once again, hasn't she, for this comeback? She yeah. certainly has, yeah. Scored two tries against uh, South Africa in that huge 55-3 victory. 26 to nil against Wales, 17-3 against Australia. And France are not done yet. Testament to the courage of this team out there. Uh, you know, tremendous pressure going on uh, on on them going into this game. Home semi-final, so much expectation. Everybody behind them, everybody wanting the success, and they've responded here because they've had a very tough first 26 minutes of the second half. So this kick from Agricol. Well, 
The rule here for an early charge is that regardless of what happens with the kick, she'll be allowed a re-kick. She's really broken Agricole's um, rhythm here. She'd do well to reset, go back through her processes, go back to the routine that you're used to. Settles down. That's the angle. That's the distance for Sandrine Agricole to bring France back within a try. Uh, she may have been put off, but there's still a converted try separating the teams. But France are right back in it, thanks to this effort, the forward effort, which brought a try for the shortlisted woman player of the year, Safi Andiai. Well, you see the early charge here, and I'm sure the French supporters are very unhappy about that. But anyway, we're back to a one-score game. 12 minutes to go. Who will it be, France or Canada? Through to the final, where England await. Classic truck and trailer ruling. <laughs> I haven't heard the old truck and trailer for a few seasons. But you called it spot on there, Simon. Well, we can just hear through the referee's mic, patience, patience. Just calling for a bit of patience out there. Don't break away from the mall. You don't want to have someone in front of the ball because it's effectively an accidental offside because you're about because it was a new mall anyway. A fantastic shot down from the centre of that uh, scrimmage. Where's Canada enjoyed supremacy in this aspect of the game for at least the first 55, 60 minutes? Now, the, with the changes, and it often happens in the game, yeah. doesn't it? But it, they really seem to have lost the edge that they had there. But Mino is still there for France, and while Mino is on the field, there's still hope for the French. Such an inspiration, the uh, Montpellier hooker. Russell scoops it away to Belchars under pressure. Bundled over, which has done well. Retains possession for Canada. Now it's with uh, Laura Russell. Canada are getting some great connected carries here at the moment. They're getting good numbers around the ball. That's very important in the close quarter stuff. That's a useful kick. It's a testing kick for Ladanus. She was taken in the air, was she? Well, she'd call for the mark. Away goes uh, Ladanus uh, to make up uh, for her earlier indiscretion over the Canadian 10 metre line. But Zussman is there looking to get her hands on the ball. Mini arrived first. France still have it. And they come again. Mayons. It has to go wide, surely. Well, was that a missed opportunity? It's still on, though, for France. And uh, Elodie Poblan. Fantastic tackle by Mandy Marchak. Breathless stuff here from both teams. Well, the mark was called by Ladanios. The villain of the first half with the yellow card, if you like. Albeit harsh. What a break it was out here. Great speed. Good handoff awareness. The presentation. The work on the ground. Then it's on on the outside, and it's into Mayans, and she's thinking, do I give it? No, I don't. And who was there to put pressure on her? Well, of course it was going to be her opposite, Burke. And then to bundle play and to touch again, it was the number 13, Marshak, 12 and 13. Once again, in defence, huge efforts. So Guy Mino finally calls it a day, and it's uh, Leticia Sales who's on for the remaining 10 minutes, and on also comes uh, Jesse Tremourlier. In place uh, of uh, Christelle Ledouf. Tremolier from the Romania club. Canada recover. Well, they scored from a similar position uh, earlier on. Not so sure that they have uh, the confidence here to go all the way. It's uh, taken up by uh, Kayla Mack. Replacement wearing 20 for Canada. Belchus just about gets the ball away in time. 
There's a lot more energy out now there from this French team, isn't there? That energy comes from what? Well, it comes from desperation. Desperation knowing that you're 10 minutes away from the full-time whistle and you're trailing by seven. That gives you a newfound energy out there and they're showing it there by putting pressure on on the Canadian number 10 there, Belchos, and putting pressure under her kick. Can they make it count? Well, there's power, there's electricity as well. Enough power, I should imagine, to uh, keep the star Jean Boin going for a whole season. And a lot of energy expended here by the French and the Canadian forwards. France looking to get that drive on. Coita, a solid number five is there with the headgear. Leading by example there. Diallo at six. And the replacements getting in on the action. That's uh, Booker Sales, number 19. That's uh, Rabier. Jeff, Jeff. And Ladanus is back on her, the uh, Canadian 10 metre line, some 10 metres in from Tachka. But Canada have stemmed the tide for the time being. As France regroup. Turned over. Looks good to me. Belchos. Finding the replacement. Tremolier. Off she goes. Fresh legs to Ladanus. She won't go far. Bundled over. Oh, Pacuan comes in. Marcha gets her hands on the ball. Or her fingernails, perhaps. Agricole, lovely pass, finding Tremolier. Mayons is there for France. Just inches in from touch. She's done well to keep the ball alive. And Canada defending a, a little narrow at the moment. And France have uh, players out wide. If they can win possession first, that is. The tackling round from the fringes by Canada is too high at the moment. They've got to start chopping and bringing this play to ground. But it looks like the replacement's got in the middle of that one. Getting That's stuck in there. Yeah, sorry, Simon. Mary Jane Kirby wearing 18. She did remarkably well there. Because had that ball come out, France certainly had the numbers out wide on the right. Interesting, isn't it? Start of the second half, the ball was turned over by Canada. Well, they got it out of the disrupted scrum and went 95 metres for a try. That occasion, they turned the ball over, had the opportunity to run. But pressure's come on now, has it? And they're thinking, we don't want to play with the ball down here. May have been a six on three, but they chose the kicking option. And they brought a whole lot of pressure back on themselves. Got to have the confidence out there to play what's in front of you. If the option's there, keep on. If it's been working or for your all game, stay with it. By kicking the ball away, they're just bringing heat, wave and wave of attack. They've been inviting back upon themselves from this uh, French outfit now, who are absolutely desperate. Yeah, and this is where Kelly Russell now needs to show leadership and uh, cool heads. That's what's required if Canada are to go through to the cup final for the very first time. We lead France by a converted try. Still plenty of time. The clock stops at 73 minutes. And there is Kelly Russell just uh, taking a, a much needed drink of water. As Canada go down into the scrum. Allery waits. From a Canadian perspective here, it's an obvious goal, but you don't want to be giving away a penalty. Penalty is going to lead to a 10 metre line out, something like that. This French mall just looks like it is going to walk over the top of everybody at this point in time. You've got to avoid penalties. Be accurate here. That's exactly what happened against Australia towards the end of the game. It was the, uh, the superior strength of the French side which brought them home. And there is a penalty. For pulling down the mall. It's uh, a little too far, I should think, uh, for Sandrine Agricole, who will kick for territory here, and exactly as you called it. No prizes for guessing what's going to happen. It all starts with a kick for touch, and it's a good touch finder from Sandrine Agricole. Superb kick, here's the scrum, you, you, you possibly feel we've got the loose head here just standing straight up and pushing on the outside, but they're going backwards, the ball trying to be picked out of the scrum by the captain Russell on that occasion, which of course is illegal, she can't pick it out from the second row's feet either, and uh, pressure, 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 and here we go, this is it I think. Well, I called it a nail biter in my introduction, and there it is. 
France again bringing in Ladanus and Mayon once again into the action again there she is the blonde bombshell France driving forward need to control it here as they do uh, through uh, Diallo the number six five meters out six meters from the uh, Canadian trial line and again Canada gets stuck in there as uh, Poublan the 22 Gives a helping big hand. Big moment here, Wynn. Big moment. She's Huge got moment. Pocket. Huge call there from referee O'Reilly. And is that the game changer? Well, we saw referee O'Reilly going to her pocket in the first half and dispatching uh, Ledanus. And this is Mary Jane Kirby, who was... Uh, Contributed valiantly to the Canadian course since she's come on. Canada need to prevent this driving mall right from the outset as soon as Diallo comes to ground. Uh, and the crowd once again roaring their approval, roaring their support. Ladanius is in there, almost to the try line, the replacement hooker. She's there. Try. And over. Is it try time for France? Yes! Helen O'Reilly has called it. Given the try, it may have been Letitia Salles, the replacement hooker, but never mind. France are right back in it. 18-16 with a conversion to come. Just belief on the Canadian subs bench. Well, it had a sense of inevitability about it, didn't it? This French that we spoke about it all game, all pre-game, the power of this French pack, the ability to maul. And on this occasion, well, they only put seven in the line-out. Classic line-out, if you like, from the French on this occasion. Too strong in there. And the opportunity to tie it up. Well, one of the most impressive kickers that I've seen, certainly in this competition. A beautiful striker of the ball. There will be absolute silence around the stadium as she prepares for this one. Two out of three. Put off by an early charge from Canada. And she attempted to convert the try from Ndiaye. For a second, you can hear the pin drop. Oh, she's pulled it. She's pulled it. All oh, the French crowd are incensed. But Canada hang on by their fingertips. They still have a two-point advantage. It's very important she puts that out of her mind now. And all it is now is just getting back into the opposition half, putting pressure on, and build another line out. That's where the opportunity is going to come from. Canada kick deep. Trancy. Harvey has it covered. She of the dancing feet. Two minutes. Two minutes for Canada to hold out. Two points. And they'll be through to the cup final where England await. The last thing they want now, well, it won't go through to extra time, certainly. It looked as if it might, as uh, Agricol set up the conversion. Belchars into midfield. Marcia could have reached for that one. She needs some support here. And gets it. Allery. All Canada need to do is to retain possession. Harvey, but the French are there in numbers. But Harvey has presented it well. Minute and a half. The clock runs down. Canada down to 14 players, remember. Mary Jane Kirby in the sin bin. France desperately wanting to get their hands on the ball. And they will get a scrum. This game is not over yet. Into the final minute. Who would have believed that it was going to be this close? Well, France have got to summon the power here from the eight again. They've really stood up over the last 20 minutes and dragged their team back in okay, with a go. shout of getting back into this game. Tactical changes coming here, but the clock still runs. This is the clock's against you at this time. Stop the clock, referee. Give them a chance. Well, that's used another half a minute. 
So back on comes the very impressive loose head prop, Marie Pierre Pino Reed. Great coaching. I wonder Great why. Coaching. <laughs> and Canada down to seven players in the scrum, of course. And Pierre Reed was superb on the loose head when she was on uh, earlier. The France have it through Andy I. Paquan tries to bring her to ground and does so. The backs are lined up outside uh, Agricole. And this is uh, Poublan steps back inside as the clock approaches the 80 minute mark. And it's uh, referee Helen O'Reilly who's the final judge of time here. Only she knows how much time will be added on. Will Canada go through or will they be denied by France? Play on, what a brilliant tackle that was from Andrea Burke. And the crowd holds its breath, its collective breath. Jeff, what have we got there? But there's still time for the line out. <whistles> there it is! Jeff Warren had a quick word perhaps with the referee. Well, the book is closed, said Sandrine Agricole. But there's still a wonderful chapter to be written for the Canadian team. They are through to the Women's Rugby World Cup final for the very first time. And France are to be denied yet again. Here at the Jean Bouin Stadium in Paris, it's finished. France 16, Canada 18. It will be Canada against England in the Cup final of 2014. Well, what a marvellous semi-final heartbreak for the French. In tears, and that is no surprise. But this Canadian side has uh, been well drilled by uh, Francois Rotier, the uh, French-born coach, and he's the first to acknowledge uh, the value of the development, uh, Canadian development plan, and in particular, you would wish me to thank uh, Geraint John. Welshman now departed for pastures new in Australia. Very supportive of uh, Francois Ratier, and he will be absolutely delighted. A belated birthday present uh, for the uh, Canadian coach. But what a birthday present it has been. It could have gone so wrong in the end there, and you have to feel for the French. They've played some fantastic rugby over the last 10 days. No team has managed to cross their try line, but Canada managed it twice. First, through that young lady, Elissa Allery, who stepped up to the scrum half berth when Stephanie Bernier was injured. And then what a fantastic score, possibly the try of the tournament from Magali Harvey. It's congratulations uh, all round for the Canadians. And I'm sure it's going to be a, a delighted uh, Kelly Russell, the captain. So influential. There is uh, Francois Ratier, who would be a, a coach, who would be an international coach. But it's uh, it's been one roller coaster ride, as we can hear now from Kelly Russell, who's talking with Sue Day. So here I am, pitch side with Kelly Russell, captain of a victorious Canadian team. Kelly, you're in the World Cup final. How does that feel? <laughs> We're elated. It's amazing. It was hard fought, and uh, I'm so proud of the girls. I'm so proud of them. I'm not sure what your pack have been eating for breakfast, but you've been so dominant in this game and the previous game. What have you been working on in training to put those performances out there? It's just our connectiveness, right? You just work as one unit, one to eight, all the way through. I mean, we, we, we started forward, and the back finishes off for us, so <laughs> it's great teamwork all around. So what will be the focus now? You're in a World Cup final in four days' time. What are you going to be thinking about tomorrow and then the next couple of days to prepare for that? Well, right now we're going to enjoy this moment tonight and then rest and relaxation. But, you know, there's still things to fix. We can still execute a little bit better. So uh, just fine-tuning a few things. Huge congratulations. You're in a World Cup final. Best of luck on Sunday. Thank you very much. Thank you.
What a fantastic night for Canadian rugby and for their inspirational captain, Kelly Russell. She's led her team to a historic win here at the Stade Jean Boin. They've denied the host and favourite France. And this was the try that set them on the way. Oh, the show and the go from Elissa Allery. The garden gate was open and Elissa Allery just marched through and smelt the roses. Brilliant opportunist try from the fullback turn scrum half and it turned the tide for Canada. But this, in my book, was the try of the tournament. Allery once again from her own try line. Marchak with the confidence to release Magali Harvey. She had a, a lot of work to do. Outpaced Madri Mayons inside Christelle Ledef. Pinned back her ears, her ponytail flowing in the wind. Away she goes, over in the corner. And that is a try that took Canada to the cup final. France gave it their best shot. Steffi Ndiaye at the back of uh, this drive for the line. Aided and abetted by the number six, Kuumba Diallo. And it looks so good for France when they manage uh, to drive over once again. But for once, the kicking of Sandrine Agricole let them down when it mattered. This was the second try. It looks so promising as the replacement hooker Leticia Sales went over. But it was not to be for France. This was always going to be Canada's night. Huge elation. The players in raptures. And you have to feel for this young lady. Her last season in the French shirt. Sandrine Agricole retiring after this Rugby World Cup. She'll have to pick herself up again for the third and fourth playoff, a game that no one wants to be in where they will face Ireland. Confirmation then, and the Ian Salles for France. But those tries from Allery and Harvey, a conversion and two penalties from Harvey. And that has seen Canada through to the Women's Rugby World Cup final of 2014. And what a cracking final it promises to be on Sunday. England await Canada, and we'll be back for that one. Latoya Blackwood on the field right till the end, 1816. Canada win it. Um, amazing finish. What was it like with that French pack pounding away at your line the last few minutes? <laughs> well, I think I, I, I had a heart attack watching it all over again. Um, it was it was a nail biter. Um, very fortunate to have the, um, the the depth that we had on our in our our pack. And the fifth time of trying, you'd taken women's rugby somewhere they'd never been before, a World Cup final. Did it actually set in when you were jumping around and celebrating at the end of that one? I, I think, honestly, I was just so happy that the game was over. I was so tired. <laughs> and, um, it, it, was, it was wild. It was a great experience. Um, it was so surreal. Even in the change room, as we were celebrating, we knew that um, we did an amazing job. We made history, but the, it wasn't over yet. So. And there must have been lots of sites, not only your coaches, Colette McCauley, Gary Ducolo, Francois Ratte, and, and the whole team. Uh, you provided something for them. But for all the friends and family that had traveled to be there, we heard Alyssa's dad's flew over especially. Just, um, you know, providing that opportunity for the friends and family to come support you in that final. Must have been great. It was amazing. Um, we had a, a huge um, group of alumni come and, uh, and support us. Um, just all the fans and friends that faced, um, sent us Facebook messages, that uh, sent us text messages. It was just um, a surreal feeling. And it felt like there was there were 15 of us on the field, but it felt like there was a, an entire na nation behind us. And how long was it before you started thinking about England? They were going to be your opponents a week later, a game we're going to have coming up on the DHL clubhouse. But uh, what was that like? How long did you start thinking about that game that possibly you could have won in the pool? <laughs> oh, I think... I think I, I I personally thought about it the next day. Um, I probably didn't go to bed until 4 a.m. in the morning because it was just, everything was just buzzing. It was just an amazing experience. But we knew that uh, we had some un unfinished business to deal with. 
Well, thank you to you and your teammates for bringing us that moment. Thank you to DHL for delivering all these great games for us. And uh, it's been awesome to look back. What a moment for Canadian rugby. And, of course, thank you to all our frontline workers who are keeping us safe. Cheers for cheering it, tuning in. Thank you.